Number 8. Whether it's beards, mustaches, goatees, or the groovy beloved sideburns, people have been rocking facial hair for thousands of years. Sometimes there's the occasional problem that can come from it, like getting food stuck in your stash or it's starting to get itchy. But it's usually never anything too serious. Sadly though, one man had his own beard turn against him. Hans Steininger was a pretty big deal during his time. In the 16th century, he was the mayor of his town, Braunau am Inn, located near Austria and Germany. Although the kind of man he was or how he served as a public leader has been forgotten, he still became a bit of a legend to the locals after his death. Hans was remembered for having a beard nearly 5 feet, 1.5 meters long. That's longer than some people are tall. Unfortunately, despite being such an impressive man, his death was anything but. On September 28, 1567, a fire broke out in the town, sending everyone into chaos. Usually worn tied up and out of the way, Hans's beard was loose, left flowing in the wind as he ran in fear. But while he was trying to escape, he accidentally stepped on the beard, causing him to trip and fall down his stairs. In this horrible turn of events, he managed to break his neck during the fall. But here's an interesting fact. The town of Braunau am Inn kept the mayor's beard. It's been preserved and on display for nearly 450 years since that fateful day. It's quite the artifact. So if you ever find yourself between Austria and Germany and you happen to visit this town, go see one of the most impressive beards in history. Number 7. Inventive Death The Eiffel Tower has been a monumental and distinguishing landmark of Paris for hundreds of years. But despite being one of the most popular tourist destinations in the City of Love, did you know over 300 people have died at the tower? This includes the self-proclaimed inventor Franz Reichelt. The tragic event was actually caught on film in 1912 in a video that is now stored in the British Path Archive. It all started when Franz became inspired by parachutes. As the owner of a dressmaking shop in the city, he soon took his inspiration and turned it into an obsession. He wanted to create an easy wearable option for the life-saving parachute. But sadly, this would turn out to be his final ambition. Since one had been accomplished before in history as far back as Leonardo da Vinci's time, Franz thought his objective would be doable. He sought to improve the historic design through his own ideas, one of which where he changed the original canopy type design and instead opted for a piece of fabric that was intended to catch wind similar to a sail in order to ease into a landing. In his early days of designing the chute, his creations weighed an astounding 154 pounds, 70 kilograms, which was anything but practical for the average wearer. But later on, through small improvements, he got the weight down to 55 pounds, 25 kilograms, an astounding difference. In the testing stages, Franz used multiple dummies, but they all failed, and eventually, he tested it himself and got a broken leg in return. Even with these failed test runs, though, he refused to change his design. Franz full-heartedly believed that the only problem was the height at which he was testing, so he tried something a little higher, the Eiffel Tower. At first, his requests to attempt the jump were adamantly denied until he said it would only be a dummy, but that was a lie. Despite the pleas from his close friends to not jump, Franz believed in his invention. While climbing the stairs to the top, he told the crowd that had gathered below, see you soon, and at the top of the tower, he waited for almost a minute before finally jumping. Sadly, his parachute never fully opened, and Franz hit the ground at full force, killing him instantly. If there's anything to learn here, it'd be to triple check inventions and perhaps do a few more test runs before putting an actual person at risk. Number 6. Bank Robbing A lot of times, bank robbing in television and movies is portrayed as a high risk and well thought out heist. But sometimes, things aren't always what they look like on TV. Most of the time, robbing a bank doesn't go well and the thieves end up behind bars. But for Brian Douglas Wells, things turned out even worse. On an August afternoon in 2003, the middle-aged pizza delivery driver walked into a Pennsylvania bank with a frightening note. It told the teller to get a bag ready as quickly as possible with a quarter million dollars in cash. To make matters worse, Brian pointed to a device on his neck with a 15-minute timer. It was a bomb. Frightened, the teller did everything she could but was unable to open the bank's vault. All she could gather was $8,702. Brian took the bag and the teller called authorities after he left. They found him 15 minutes later around the corner. He pleaded with the cops, saying that some strange men had put the device around him, forcing him to go inside the bank. He kept saying it was going to blow, but they didn't buy it. A bomb squad did appear at the scene, but they weren't able to stop the explosion. Brian died as the blast went off, ripping a hole in his chest. 
Despite Brian saying he was coerced into robbing the bank, some believe that he was in on the crime the entire time, but the plan just backfired. Others say his accomplices just let the bomb go off to take care of a loose end. Eventually, another arrest was made when a drug dealer, Kenneth Barnes, admitted to helping in the robbery. Even with this conviction, not everyone is convinced the truth was revealed. But if it turns out Brian was part of the mastermind plan, it's a pretty dumb way to die. So what do you think? Did Brian have any part in the robbery plan? Tell us your thoughts in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 5. Lava Lamp Remember being a kid and going to the arcade? You'd try your absolute hardest to earn as many tickets as possible to get the coolest prizes. And almost always one of those prizes was a lava lamp. As a kid, it seemed like the coolest thing imaginable and everyone wanted one. Well, as an adult, you're free to just buy one whenever you want, and that's exactly what a man from Washington did. You'd think as a 24-year-old grown-up, Philip Quinn would have had some common sense, right? Well, wrong. In fact, he for some reason thought it was a good idea to put his lava lamp on the stove while it was on. What's the worst that could happen? Maybe the stuff inside the lamp started to boil, or it just melted. Nope. At the extreme temperature it reached, the glass got so hot that the pressure built up, causing the whole thing to explode. Quinn was standing close by and a sharp piece of glass blew into his heart during the blast. You'd never think something like this could happen, but it did. His parents found his body later on. Philip died all alone in his trailer home and the only reason they came to check on him was because his girlfriend called them worried after not hearing from him for a while. After his body was examined, they determined that the shard didn't kill Philip instantly. He was able to make his way into his room before dying of blood loss. Surprisingly, he wasn't intoxicated or under the influence of any drug. He just wanted to see what would happen to the lava lamp. So to everyone watching, learn from Philip's mistake, and next time you want to try something questionable, just Google it first. Number 4. German Shepherd Almost everyone loves dogs. They're cute, cuddly, and loyal and make the perfect pets. But some people like these animals way too much. Some poor dogs are abused by people seeking out ways to satisfy their own sick form of self-pleasure. One of these abusers was a woman from Ireland that likely got karmic justice for her absurd actions. A man named Sean McDonnell met the unnamed woman online after she'd reached out to him to have sexual intercourse with his dog. She traveled all the way from her home to Britain in order to do the deed and have Sean film the entire encounter to post on some pretty disturbing pornographic websites. But something went wrong after she was done. Apparently, the 43-year-old lady had an allergic reaction to something in the dog's sperm. When her death went public and Sean's participation in the ordeal came to light, he lost his day job and his family broke off all contact. And let's be honest, this is a terrible thing to do to an animal. He was sent to court for the whole ordeal and the judge in charge of his case was so shocked by his actions that he put Sean on a public sex offenders list and made him go to court-ordered counseling sessions. Number 3. Cockroach Food competitions and cooking shows are insanely popular. Whether you're just watching the event or participating yourself, they're usually safe environments to just relax and have a little fun. Challenges can include all kinds of food from hot dogs to pastries to insanely spicy foods and more. One of these contests took place in Deerfield Beach, Florida. The competition was being held at a local drugstore and there were about 30 contestants in the running. So what were they eating? Well, they were competing to win a python and to do so, they had to eat the most live cockroaches out of everyone else. One man named Edward Archbold was set on winning the snake for one of his friends, so he took on the challenge, thinking it would be harmless fun. But after shoving dozens and dozens of crawling insects into his mouth, Edward began to choke. Eventually, he died due to asphyxiation and the amount of cockroaches in his body. The insect parts had blocked the oxygen from being able to enter his lungs. The owner of the pet shop and everyone who witnessed Edward's death were shocked and horrified. Even though he died, Edward did sign a disclaimer before participating in the competition so no blame fell on the shop. It is definitely one of the dumbest yet tragic ways to die that we've ever heard of. Number 2. Crashing Cows Imagine going to sleep just like any other night, only this time you never wake up. For many, that sounds like the ideal and most peaceful way to die. But what if it wasn't so peaceful? A man named Zhao Maria de Souza was sleeping one night at his home in Brazil when out of nowhere a cow fell through his bedroom roof and crushed him. He didn't die instantly, but he did eventually bleed out due to the incident. The 3,000-pound, 1,360-kilogram cow fell from 8 feet 2.4 meters high onto Zhao. Apparently, the animal had recently escaped from a farm that was close by. Zhao's house was right against a hill, so the cow must have gotten onto his roof somehow. 
Zhao's wife quickly took him to the hospital to try and fix him up, but he bled out from the cow-related injuries. His family was devastated. Zhao was a loving husband, brother, and son, and no one could have predicted something like this. The owner of the cow is yet to be discovered, but it's very possible that if caught, he could go to court because of the death his cow caused. Just always remember to tell the people in your life you love them, because before you know it, they might be hit by a cow falling from the sky. And it does make you wonder, what happened to the cow after this incident? Number 1. Gun Safety There are many gun owners in the United States of America, and most of them that acquire weapons legally are required to attend mandatory safety classes in order to get a permit to allow them to have a gun in the first place. An older man named Glenn Seymour went through all of these steps as a reasonable gun owner should, but while attending one of the classes, something happened. He got a little cocky and decided to try out a technique that he hadn't practiced before, and it went very, very wrong. The movie attempted was a skill that's only taught in high-level courses, but Glenn was just at an average concealed carry class in Missouri. He should not have been testing out his ability here, but it's too late now. During the instruction, Glenn accidentally shot himself in the chest and he died almost instantly. Witnesses and his instructor at the time said it was an awful accident that should never have happened. The gun Glenn was using was a 9mm semi-automatic handgun and he'd taken the safety off. One of the first things they teach you when handling a weapon like this is to never put your finger on the trigger unless you intend to fire. But sadly, it seems that Glenn didn't remember this rule. Number 10. Attack of the Rescue Dog Alexandra Prakowska was once a model for L'Oreal. The Polish national also worked as an actress when she couldn't find work. You might say she had the perfect face for TV. Unfortunately for her, that perfect face was ruined after she nearly lost her left eyeball after rescuing a seemingly innocent dog. In fact, she was blamed by the shelter for the attack, with them saying that she brought it upon herself by being a lazy dog owner. The incident went down in Warsaw when Alexandra was rushed to the hospital with injuries to her face. Her new dog, named Logan, apparently went absolutely berserk after several months of living with her. According to the local reports, Logan had a troubled past and suffered from cancer. He was also known for occasionally being aggressive and has once even attacked Alexandra's neighbor's daughter. Oh yeah, and the dog also bit the previous owner's neighbor's wife. Basically, the dog was a loose cannon, but Alexandra was dedicated to her pet. Well, she was dedicated to it right up until the moment when Logan mutilated her so badly that her left eye nearly fell out. She's now probably never going to model again. Her face has been horribly scarred, and she has since taken Logan back to the shelter. She blames them for misinformation, giving away the dog to an unwitting owner when it was clearly dangerous. Number 9. Bite of the Serpent A man from Limburg in the Netherlands was recently recovering in the hospital after spending 10 long days in a medically induced coma. The reason doctors put him in a coma is because he had gotten bit by a cobra that he was keeping in his cellar for fun. Maybe karma was teaching him a lesson? The man has not been named for privacy reasons. He's probably embarrassed, but according to the Brussels Times, he had several different exotic snakes kept inside his house. However, the cobra was definitely the most dangerous. The man knew it was dangerous too, because he had isolated it from the other snakes in his cellar. Amazingly, the pet owner tried to defend his snake and keep it away from wildlife officials. He told the authorities that he had been bitten by a random snake and that he didn't know where it had come from. Then it came out, months after the incident, that it was actually his pet. Authorities have since gone to his house to pick up all the exotic snakes he was keeping illegally, including the cobra and a pair of rattlesnakes from Texas. According to the wildlife workers, they weren't even kept in good cages. They were in plexiglass containers with sliding doors that the snakes were able to open by themselves. And after being busted, the man admitted that one of his rattlesnakes had bitten him before as well. He had already lost his finger to one of his exotic snakes, but he just couldn't give them up. He has since made a full recovery from the cobra attack, but with people like this, he's probably just going to find another cobra somewhere and put that one in his cellar. Number 8. Hungry Lions At the Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago, a zookeeper forgot that she had let the lions out. This is one thing you definitely don't want to ever forget while working at a zoo. When she walked into their yard to fill up their giant water dish, she forgot that they were prowling around the enclosure. Within just seconds of walking into the outdoor lion exhibit, the animal spotted her. At 60 years old, Nancy De Fiesta wasn't in the best shape for running away. The lions jumped, and she was helpless. To be quite honest, she is lucky that she survived at all. 
According to the Chicago Tribune, she suffered 64 puncture wounds to her head and body before zoo employees managed to get her out. The incident was investigated by the U.S. Occupational Safety and Health Administration. The investigation found that during the first two hours of the morning, zoo workers can sometimes make errors. This is the time of day when animals need to be fed and exhibits need to be cleaned. In this case, a single mistake of forgetting that the lions were already in the enclosure caused Nancy to almost be killed. She has since recovered, though she will bear the scars of her encounter for the rest of her life. She declined to give any comments to the media, and we don't know if she'll ever go back to working with the huge cats. Number 7. The Deadliest Lizards Ronald Huff died in 2002. The story of Ronald and his lizards is one of the most terrifying examples of what can happen when pets go wrong. The police were mortified when they walked through Ronald's front door to discover he had been eaten alive by his collection of Nile monitor lizards. In fact, when the police showed up, the seven reptiles were in the process of feasting on his corpse. At 42 years old, Ronald became dinner for his very own flesh-eating friends. For those who didn't know, monitor lizards are basically a mix between a crocodile, a dinosaur, and a Komodo dragon. These venomous creatures typically live in Africa, but have been popular household pets in the past few decades. According to what the former Newcastle County Sheriff told Animal Planet, when they knocked on Ronald's door, they could hear shuffling from inside. They knew someone was in there, but nobody would answer. They broke down the door, and there was Ronald. One of the lizards looked up, licked its bloody lips, and then kept eating. But this case was never technically solved. Nobody knows if it was the seven lizards that ganged up and killed Ronald, or if he died from natural causes and then was simply devoured. Since he had allowed his pet lizards to roam freely around the house, it was impossible to say just what exactly happened. Number 6. Emotional Alligator A man named Joey Henry from Pennsylvania has a rather unusual emotional support animal. Most people have dogs for emotional support pets, while the occasional lonely person may have a cat or a rabbit, but not Joey, who recently registered his four-year-old alligator to be his emotional support friend. The alligator's name is Wally. He's about five feet long. He weighs around 60 pounds, and he goes everywhere that Joey goes. This includes shopping at Walmart and watching baseball games. I'm happy to say that as of right now, Wally has not actually turned on Joey, but keep in mind that it's probably going to happen at just about any time. Everyone knows alligators are wild animals and not to be trusted. Alligators are more unpredictable than big cats, bears, or any other bizarre animal that someone keeps in their home. And speaking of keeping animals in their home, Joey keeps Wally inside a plastic indoor pond. And if you're wondering where you even get an emotional support alligator, Joey simply took Wally from outside when he found him wandering around at 14 months old. Wally actually became the very first alligator in America to earn the title of emotional support animal, and he's apparently helping Joey to deal with his depression. What do you think? Is it just a matter of time before Wally snaps on his owner and bites one of his legs off? Or do you think having a literal alligator living in his house is perfectly sane and not dangerous at all? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe button. Number 5. Bad News Bear Kellyanne Waltz has a captive black bear that she keeps with her husband. This beastly bear was 350 pounds living at Kelly's home. She and her husband kept it in a cage, but it was still thought as a member of the family. Kelly's husband happened to be an exotic pet dealer operating in Pennsylvania with an expired license. They were absolutely not supposed to have exotic animals on their property, but this didn't stop them from having a lion, a jaguar, a tiger, two servals, a leopard, and the black bear. Since they were living in the Poconos Mountains, nobody really cared what they were doing, at least not until Kelly tried to clean the black bear's cage and ended up being mauled to death. When you hear the details of how Kelly was cleaning the cage, it will come as no surprise that she was killed. She opened the door to the cage, threw a shovel full of dog food to one side of it, then used the small window of opportunity to clean the opposite side while the bear ate the dog food. This time, the bear was not so easily distracted. When Kelly turned her back, the bear abandoned the dog food and charged. She screamed in horror, but that only made the bear angrier. By the time a neighbor showed up with a gun and shot the wild animal to death, Kelly was already dead. Number 4. Killed by Big Bird In Florida, a man was keeping a cassowary on his property. For those who don't know what a cassowary is, it's basically like a mixture between a flamingo and a dinosaur. It is a huge, flightless bird native only to Australia and Papua New Guinea. 
These ridiculously massive birds can grow to be around 6 feet tall and 130 pounds. Their bodies are covered in huge black feathers. They have bright blue heads, and they have claws so big and so sharp, they can easily eviscerate a human being. And that's exactly what happened in Gainesville when the victim was killed by his pet cassowary. According to the deputy chief on the case, Jeff Taylor, the victim was hanging out with the bird when he fell over. Nobody knows how he fell, if it was his own fault, or if the bird somehow tricked him. But when he hit the ground, the bird saw its opportunity and attacked. It used its huge claws to mangle the poor man, literally tearing him to shreds. The San Diego Zoo says that cassowaries are the most dangerous birds in the world, able to run 31 miles an hour and able to slice open even the most dangerous predators with just one kick. Number 3. The Farmer's Pigs Mr. Shustoff was in his 70s when he went missing. It was New Year's Eve, and his family was very worried. They beseeched the local authorities for help, but it wouldn't be until January 8th, over a week after the victim went missing, that police discovered what happened to him. To get a better idea of how things went very wrong for Mr. Shustoff, keep in mind that he was a pig farmer. He lived in a small Polish village where he took care of two adult pigs and 12 piglets. These animals were free-range, allowed to roam around in the yard, and even around the farmer's house by themselves. His neighbors told the police that the pigs were gigantic and that they ran wild across his property. Sadly for the pig farmer, he happened to be outside on New Year's Eve when he suffered a sudden heart attack. He fell down, probably died in the muck, and his corpse was there for his pigs to eat. His loyal, friendly pigs suddenly weren't so loyal anymore. On January 8th, the police found the victim mostly eaten by his pigs, with only a few scraps of him left, including some pieces of skull and bone. Other than that, the pigs had eaten every last part of him. Number 2. Attack of the Pit Bull In New Jersey, a couple were left with horrible injuries after being attacked inside their very own home by the family pit bull. According to officers with the South Brunswick Police, emergency medical workers were called to the property in the middle of the afternoon, at which point they discovered a man and woman, both in their 60s, with serious lacerations on their limbs. The victims informed the police that the pit bull randomly attacked the man while he was minding his own business in his bedroom. The woman ran into the room to see what was happening, and that was when the dog turned on her. Luckily, there happened to be another resident in the house, a guy in his 30s. The younger man was able to wrestle the dog off the elderly people. If it hadn't been for him, the dog very well may have ripped them both to pieces. Unfortunately, we can never predict an animal's behavior. Something must have made the dog snap. The dog was handed over to South Brunswick Animal Control, but they have not given any additional info on why the attack happened. We don't know if the dog had been feral or if its owners were simply negligent. According to the National Pit Bull Victim Awareness Organization, sadly, there is a human death by pit bull every 13 days. And number one, the reptile keeper. The zookeeper who almost died after being attacked by her very own pet reptile has defended the beast by saying he was just having a bad day. The animal handler just about lost her hand after the alligator chomped down on her arm during a children's party. Lindsay Bull was feeding Darth Gator, her beloved 11-year-old monster, in front of a group of children when it grabbed her by the wrist and then dragged her backwards into his tank. It likely would have eaten her if not for one of the guests at the children's party jumping into the water and prying its jaws open. But even after this terrifying brush with death and in front of an audience of horrified children no less, Lindsay is defending her alligator with everything she has. She recently told Desert News, after being released from the hospital, that she is going to keep him and he is going to have no consequences for what happened. She says he was just doing what animals do, and while that might be right, she was left with a damaged tendon and multiple fractures. Number 10. Cab Driver Femicide Former cab driver Ricardo Alexis Diaz was recently sentenced to 50 years in prison for one of the most brutal incidents of taxis gone wrong. This sick taxi driver is responsible for murdering a young student in Mexico. Mara Fernanda Castilla Miranda went missing in September of 2017 after taking a cab to the outskirts of Puebla near Mexico City. According to the investigators, Ricardo, who was only 24 years old at the time, kidnapped Mara instead of bringing her to her destination. He took the girl against her will to a hotel, where he then strangled her to death. After the brutal murder, he dumped her body in a ditch, where it was found several days later. It's unclear what the motive behind the killing was, 
Ricardo had been a taxi driver for a while and could have killed any number of people, but he just seems to have snapped when Mara got into his cab. The dead girl's mother told local news that she was satisfied with the sentence of 50 years, though she would have preferred 60 years. She also said that although Ricardo is being punished by the authorities, a divine punishment will come from him in time. Number 9. An Opportunistic Murder After a couple forgot their keys in a cab, their worst nightmare came to life. It was a Saturday morning in Brazil when Marcelo Sala was contacted to give the couple a ride to Florencio Varela. It was a seven-hour drive, which passed completely normal without any incident. However, the couple asked that the driver wait for them outside. When the couple got out of the car, Marcelo noticed that they had left their keys and a fanny pack in the back seat. He decided it was a great opportunity to take their keys, drive back to their house, and rob them blind. So, Marcelo did just that. He took off without them, drove back to their house, and then used the keys to get inside. Marcelo thought nobody would be home. However, the daughter of his passengers was in the house. At just 23 years old, Eileen Estefanda Arredondo got into a fight with the old man when he used her parents' keys to get inside. The fight turned violent, with Marcelo beating the poor girl until she was completely disfigured. According to official sources, he beat her so badly that she died right there on the floor of her very own house. And here's where things got really dramatic. As Marcelo tried to leave, the neighbors caught him and made a civilian arrest. They held him until the police arrived, at which point the police took him away. We don't know what's become of Marcelo the murderer, but he's almost certainly never going to see the light of day again for what he did. Number 8. North Irish Drug Smuggler During the pandemic, a taxi driver from Northern Ireland wanted to make a bit of easy money, so he decided to get into a business of smuggling drugs. He was recently busted along with his two accomplices in an operation that consisted in smuggling over $500,000 worth of cannabis between the capital of Belfast and Dungannon. Damien Gildernew was the brains behind the operation, busted by police when they stopped his taxi in an underground parking lot and found over 10 kilos of cannabis in the trunk. When the police searched the apartment upstairs, they found another 16 kilos of cannabis in a cupboard in his bedroom. The weed was vacuum sealed in plastic bags, ready for distribution. In total, that's almost 60 pounds of pot. The arrest came following a long investigation in which the police watched surveillance footage outside the apartment where Gildernew was busted. The police saw that he was going to and from the apartment at random times, suggesting he was moving drugs. As it turns out, he was a regular courier hauling weed between one city and another, but he was only getting paid around $200 each journey. The money from the pot didn't actually go to him, he was simply getting paid to move it. It wasn't a very lucrative operation and proved to be significantly more trouble than it was worth. Number 7. Taxi Battering Ram In Hong Kong, a taxi was used like a battering ram when it crashed into a pedestrian island, killing one and injuring almost ten. The crash was an accident. The taxi driver never actually intended to kill anyone. Instead, he was just old and driving dangerously. According to the local Hong Kong police, the driver was 63 years old at the time and had since been arrested for dangerous driving. The incident occurred on Tai Po Road when he seemingly lost control of his cab and smashed into the pedestrian island where people were waiting to cross the street. After the impact, a pregnant woman was left trapped underneath his ruined taxi. Luckily, some good Samaritans rushed into the street and worked together to lift the taxi off the pregnant woman, saving her from certain death. Among the victims rushed to the hospital was an elderly woman and a four-year-old boy. Another woman was unconscious and had to be carried to the nearest hospital, while another three victims were rushed to the hospital, but not in serious condition. As for the person who died following the brutal crash, they have yet to be identified by the authorities. So far as we know, the person died immediately after getting run over by the rogue taxi. Number 6. Taxi Killer Christopher Hollowell is a maniac murderer who used to drive a cab in York, England. He was actually in jail, serving a life sentence for killing Sean O'Callaghan back in 2011 when he was charged with yet another murder from 2003 of Becky Godden. But the real horror story is that since then, Christopher has confessed to even more mysterious killings that would make him one of the worst serial killers in English history. But to understand the taxi killer a bit better, let's back up to before he was arrested. At 52 years old, Christopher was living with his partner and his three daughters. Fellow taxi driver Neil Barnett described Christopher as a really nice guy and a totally normal person. But what his friends, co-workers, and family didn't know was that Christopher had a dark side. He was secretly using prostitutes in his spare time. He was getting rough and weird. 
with some of them being forced to call for help. His nightly activities came to a grinding halt when he was directly connected to the murder of Sean O'Callaghan, but he has also been linked to the disappearance of a girl named Claudia Lawrence. Even more disturbing is that police found a secret trophy trunk filled with women's clothing, about 60 articles in total. Two of the items were identified as one belonging to Sean and the other to Becky Godden. The other 58 are still unknown, suggesting Christopher may have killed upwards of 60 women throughout his entire life. Number 5. Road Rage Taxi driver Adib Ibrahim used his vehicle as a weapon to kill a man named Ralph Bizanet. It was a terrifying case of road rage gone wrong, and the driver has since been sentenced to spend four years in prison. How it all started is, quite frankly, a little shocking. The taxi driver had gotten into an unfortunate interaction with Ralph right before the murder. Ralph was riding his longboard when the cab drove a little too close to him. Upset, Ralph yelled at the taxi driver and hit his vehicle with his hand. It wasn't the end of the world, just a light slap against the cab. But the driver became so furious that he swerved his cab into Ralph's path. He lost his temper and tried to run the guy down. During court proceedings, it was found that the driver did indeed use his vehicle as a weapon with the intent of hurting Ralph, not just scaring him. The cab hit the long border. He was crushed, his skull cracked like an egg, and he died instantly. Superior Court Justice Robert Clark said the only merciful aspect of the incident is that Ralph had a swift death, though the kid's final moments may have been horrific. Number 4. Crack Dealing Taxi Driver a taxi driver has been busted selling crack cocaine to fake passengers. The cabbie drug dealer named Reese Hearn was jailed for three years. He got caught after an unmarked police car got suspicious of his movements. The officer had witnessed Reese's cab pull up to a bus stop, pick up a lady, drive about 300 yards, then stop and let her out. Thinking it was a bit weird, the officer followed the taxi and pulled him over. Inside the cab, the cop found a stash of about $265 in cash, a phone with messages relating to drug dealing, and 10 pre-packaged bundles of 65% pure crack. There was also a Ziploc bag with 77% pure cocaine. Once Rees knew he was busted, he told officers that he was just trying to make a living. But what a measly living it was. Rees admitted that he only made about $600 in a week, keeping about $200 for himself and giving the rest to his supplier. Number 3. Killed by Umbrella Something terrifying happened in Brooklyn involving a taxi driver and an umbrella. Eyewitnesses told police that a gypsy cab driver by the name of Uro Ama Orji, an immigrant from Nigeria, was savagely attacked by his male passenger and the passenger's female companion as they got out of his cab on Thomas S. Boylan Street. The brutal attack was something straight out of a horror movie. The assailant took his umbrella and jabbed it into the taxi driver's eyeball. His eyes immediately burst open gushing blood all over the taxi. His foot involuntarily hit the gas. The car sped for about a block, smashed into some parked cars, and the driver slumped over dead. The umbrella hit him so hard in the eye that it pierced his brain and killed him. Fernando Mateo, the head of the New York Federation of Taxi Drivers, said that the method used to kill Mr. Uro was barbaric and unheard of. He said he's seen stabbings and shootings, but never someone getting poked through the eye and into the brain with an umbrella tip. Police have yet to pin down a motive, though they did find the suspect. Shamel Allen, 28 years old, was discovered hiding in the closet of his friend's house by the police. They booked him, threw him in jail, and he has since been charged with manslaughter and a criminal possession of a weapon. He was even picked out of a police lineup, reducing any chance of him getting away with this brutal crime. Number 2. Inappropriate Driver a cab driver in Jordan was recently arrested after he got caught watching inappropriate adult videos inside his cab while parked on the street. This guy was such a pervert that he couldn't even wait until he got home, so he had to indulge while on the job. To make matters worse for this guy, he got busted on video by a passerby who uploaded the gruesome site to social media. The authorities got a hold of the video, launched an investigation, and quickly tracked the guy down and dealt with him. But just wait, because the story gets even more gross. The arrest of the pervert came just days after two separate videos were shared on social media in Jordan of two different people, both cab drivers, committing indecent acts while alone and driving their vehicles through the city. The lesson here is to maybe stay out of taxis the next time you take a trip to Jordan, as these guys are clearly up to no good. And number one, Cabin in the Woods. A taxi driver in Georgia met a gruesome end when she was murdered. Her name was Rosanna Delgado. 
and she was last seen on surveillance footage in DeKalb County on April 20th. Four days after she was reported missing, her remains were found burned in a cabin in the woods. Her body had been cut up and the pieces set on fire. The only reason her body was discovered at all was that the police managed to track her phone signal to the site of the murder. The police immediately realized they were dealing with something terrible, so they went and checked through the local surveillance footage of the day Miss Delgado went missing. They found Miss Delgado shopping in a local store with a woman named Megan Cologne, who they arrested on suspicion of murder. They have since arrested four more people in connection with the killing, with three suspects still at large. They have no idea what prompted the horrible crime, and the police are still pretty tight-lipped about the situation because the investigation is ongoing. What we do know is that most of the suspects will probably be charged in connection to the murder, either as murderers themselves or accomplices. As for the unfortunate victim, she was 37 years old and a mother of two, just trying to make a living as a driver for Lyft. It's not like she had any money, so a robbery was probably out of the question. This may have been a simple cold-blooded murder perpetrated by some real sick people. How do you feel about hopping in a cab after hearing these wild stories? Let us know in the comments, and thanks for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and come back for another shocking video. See you next time.